Welcome once again to another version of Let's Talk Music Richmond. I'm Bill McGee, your co-host with Charles Mann over there. And today we have a very special guest. He is James Saxmo Gates, famous young musician here in Richmond. You know, now let me cut in here. Those that came before him definitely cut the path for him. He did not have to learn this on his own. He had perfect, he had examples in front of him all of his life, but he chose to go down this path. Nobody pushed him down this path. And I can really call him a young man because he's much younger than I, but he chose this music path. He yeah, but he, he, was, he was a good ball player, but he didn't make the pros. He is a, he's a handsome young man. Uh, uh, Denzel Washington type. The one thing that he has done with all of those gifts <laughs> is learn how to play that saxophone. No doubt. Yes, uh, Dr. 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 James Gates, it's a pleasure to have you here. We have never introduced anybody that way before. And let me tell you something. Charles, man, you know, I'm I'm like a little teen little kid right now with you and Bill McGee. Oh my God. <laughs> man, I you look, I, look, if I sound stumbling on my words, it's because man, I'm I have so much respect and so much love for both of y'all, man, because it's a little kid looking through that little keyhole, man. It was something, man, that that I I I've been doing a long time, still doing it now. You know, it's I mean, Bill, no, man. I mean, all the records, it's, 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 it's all credited to him, man. And, you know, I, I just like to tell the truth because he's, you know, Bill used to tell me, I mean, remember when I was going to Virginia State and then I went to Berkeley, he said, Gates, man, you go, you know, you really need to go and take that other step, man. You know, go take that other step so you can protect yourself, man. And I, I just was not ready for that, man. I was, you know, still, you know, uh, in Boston. Then I started playing with various people, man. So, uh, we're gonna, we gonna get to all that. Yeah, oh, I want to get to all yeah, that. We gotta get to all that. See, yeah. see, uh, Charles, as we honor uh, some of our band directors and everything else, one of my band directors told me about this dude right here when he was like just starting high school. I mean, he's like um, the same uh, uh, one of the same. Uh, it's like when Clark Turr told me about Wynton Marcellus when Marcellus was twelve years old. And Clark Turry told me, he said, man, there's a boy down in New Orleans that can play that classical and, and jazz equally well. He's going, he's going, well, well, the teacher that I'm talking about here told me about the young boy on saxophone down there at John F. Kennedy High School in Richmond, Virginia, that's going to light it up. He said, he's going to light it up now. He said, everybody need to get ready because this, this young man going to light it up. And he was probably about in the ninth or 10th grade at the time. Who was your first music teacher and how did you get involved in music? John Payton was my first teacher. You started off with the top, top of the notch right there. John Payton came over to Fairfield Elementary School in the third grade and asked everybody who wanted to play an instrument. And then, you know, and at that time I was playing the, the little recorder. You gonna play the saxophone and Charles, I didn't even know that when I was born, he was in the, in the, in the room with dad when I was born. And oh my God. And they decided then that they wanted me. They to be, decided then. They decided then. They, that's the story. And Dad said every every night before he went to bed, he would play the saxophone to my mom's stomach. They they wanted me to be a saxophone. Your skill level is is beyond just practice. Okay, let me tell you that first. You not you didn't just practice to get to be that good. That was inherited in the bloodline. That was instilled in your dreams before you knew you had a dream. That was your that was the the gods putting the footsteps in the sand for you to put your foot in thereafter. That's right. You were led that way. Called. Yeah. You still had to measure up. There were challenges along the way. Because yeah. anytime you took classes from Johnny Payton, I mean, you know, that was not exactly easy. <laughs> okay. Oh. You know, that, oh. that was not the easiest thing to do. No, you know? no, so no. he will put you to the test to see if you deserve to be there. That's right. That's right. <laughs> he sure did gave me some many tests. Look, we used to walk. We had to, he came with that little that uh, El Dorado. 
the big long El Dorado right. and, would, and would pick us up right at the school and take us to John F. Kennedy and would scare us to death, man. I mean, you used to tell me all the time, son, I don't know what in the world I'm doing because your sound stink, but you have to keep practicing. <laughs> <laughs> so you see, that's the kind of thing that either makes you put in or quit. That's right. So Johnny was the right teacher for you because see, Johnny told me the meaning of the little black dots. Okay, I had I had dyslexia on everything I was reading, but when it came to the little black dots, oh, I could see them straight in the line. You know what I mean? <laughs> I could read I could read a measure ahead on those things when I was in the sixth grade. Where did Johnny Payton first teach you? Elementary, Fairman on Twenty First in, in uh, T Street. In, in Church Hill. Uh, that's that Down old Hill. elementary school. It's an old folks' home now or something? Or that's correct. That's right. correct. Well, see, I went to George Mason after that with Pop Williams in the seventh grade. And then the eighth grade, he's then uh, junior high. I had Johnny Payton. And then ninth through twelfth, uh, I had, again, Pop Williams at Armstrong. So who, were yeah, your who, who after that, Gates? Who came after that? Joe Kennedy. See? There you go. Look out. Look out. Let me, let me explain something to you, man. You were destined to do the things that you do, whether you knew it or not or not. Correct. But his daddy was Boo Gates. It's We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about that. <laughs> and, then, and then you had Johnny Payton and Joe Kennedy. I mean, it's like, come on, man. It's like anybody from Richmond, Virginia, if you say that Boo Gates, Johnny Payton, and Joe Kennedy taught a brother, if you only had one, right. you were lucky. Right. To have yeah. all three. But oh. that ain't it. It didn't even just stop with Joe with Joe Kennedy. Who else do you have after that? Um, back to John and Peyton. Back to Peyton again. We got to Kennedy. Oh yeah, <laughs> man. Oh. Yeah, it, it, it was uh it did, but and I also found out Charles, man, from from what they told me is that, you know, when I got in the sixth grade, Mr. Peyton said, when you get to Joe. You gonna know every scale before you get there, right? Oh so yeah. I, so I knew all my all my major scales when I got to Mr. Kennedy in the sixth grade. In the seventh grade, he said, "Okay, now when I get you to get back to Mr. Payton again, then we're gonna have you to be able to be prepared to make all district and all state in first chair." Did you play any of the other woodwinds? Not in high school. I didn't play none until I got to to college. Did you play tenor and, uh, or just mostly alto in high school? Mostly alto. Um, he wanted me to play tenor, but uh, Mr. Payton said, no, nah, you know, you need to play that alto because, you know, boo is boo. Johnny started me out on clarinet. And I think that came from my dad initially because he wouldn't buy me a saxophone. He told me the only way I was going to play sax, I was going to have to buy myself after I finished high school. And I'm gonna have to play clarinet all the way through. What he didn't tell me was that once you learn the clarinet, you already know how to play saxophone and you already know how to play flute. You don't know that when you're learning the sax the clarinet initially. I kept saying, I want to play this little sissy thing, take you know. So the first couple of years I was just the message saying no, no, no. But they were very insistent that I stayed on the clarinet. Yeah. And then I saw seeing these Oboes, the bassoon, that's that. If he's got a read on it, I can play it. And so, showing up the finger and jumped over. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that came because my dad was in the army band for a little while, and all he played was alto sax. Yeah. And he said he messed up because he did not know how to play the clarinet. Yeah. The opportunities probably missed him because when you can double like that and, and you know, in the army and everything else, you get. Probably get promotions, opportunities. And extra pay. Right, extra money too, right. At, at John F. Kennedy High School, who were some of the other musicians with you in school there at the time? Oh, in high school we had Ernest Williams. Ernest Williams, Pee Wee, Zebulon. He, Zebulon. Bill, he could, he could simply say he only know stars like himself. <laughs> yeah, he could. He could say that. He could say that. Well, who are some of the other people that, that you played in school with? At Killer Christian, the bass player we had uh, in school with us. We had, um, what's it, Anthony Ingram. Anthony Ingram. Oh, my gosh. But he was playing guitar at 12, 13 years old. Yes, Lord, man. 
Abner Ingram, I snatched him when he was 15 and took him with me to uh, Atlantic Records. And there was a whole lot of times being in, in the band room, you know, Mr. Payton, he would allow us, you know, he'll have allowed me and Pee Wee and, you know, and, and we'll get together and start to play. And he'll pull us out and say, okay, I need y'all to demonstrate. You better not mess up. <laughs> he'll pay us some money. He said, okay, I'm going to pay y'all uh, between 5 and $10 to play. Make sure y'all play this, this line right. But if you mess up, you got to give me my money back. That, that sounds like Johnny. Right. Bay. That's so good. What's the first band that you played with? first band I played was called Mark IV. Kenneth Christian, he played in it for, for a minute. And then we had a trombonist, pianist, his name was Arlo Allen. Arlo Allen, he went to John Marshall. But we had a lot of, old, a lot of older people at that time. And Charles, let me tell you what, what took place. When, when I got in that band, um, they had to you know, pick me up from my mama house and then bring me back. But when they came to my mama house, Ma invited, me, invited them in the house. And they, mom said it just like, told them just like this. If you F with my son, then you would not be able to walk home again. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. So you bring my, my son back. You bring him up. Exactly where you picked him up. Exactly where you need to bring him back. And he needs to be back at a certain time. And then I got with me and, um, me and Pee Wee, uh, Ernest Williams. We, we started getting our own band together. That's what he told. So here's a question I always never got to answer. What made you go to Virginia State University? How I got to Virginia State? Mr. Ethan Pitts. Yeah, Mr. Ethan Pitts allowed me to play my saxophone on the baseball team. That allowed me to practice before I went to the practice field. Allowed me to practice on the field. Allowed me to be able to play my horn on the bus to the games. Allowed me to play the national anthem to every game, whether it was home or away. And Wait a minute, boy. Man, that, that's like a red copy laid out for you the whole time. That's right. He said you, he knew that, that saxophone, well, that was it for me. He said, well, you want to play baseball? Okay. Well, you practice before you come to the field, but bring your home because we still need you to practice on the field with us, you know, all the time. I didn't know my senior year, uh, Mr. Pitts had taken a, a drive down to Virginia State and we're talking to the chairman of music. He told him that you will give him a scholarship. We have a guy by the name of James Gates, you know, and you, but you will give him a scholarship. And when I, when senior night came around, you know, I, uh, he, he presented me with my full scholarship to Virginia State University. Yeah. Okay. Let, let's, let's say that you were lucky to be in that family line. You were lucky that your dad knew these folks. You were lucky that you had the right teacher. You were lucky that you had the opportunity to play at the, at the opening of all these different games. You were lucky that folks let you practice in their house and let you practice on the baseball field. I mean, you were lucky, you were lucky, lucky. That ain't luck, bro. That's, that's too much luck. Mm -hmm. that's, that, that, that's called, it, it, it was destined to happen. Even though it were destined to happen, it would not have happened had you not been committed and able to accomplish those things that were laid out for you. You measured up. That's what happened. And every time you measured up, another flower blossom and another door opened for you. Yeah. You yeah. did that. Well, you you know, did that. Charles, the, the, when it just so happens that when he came to Virginia State, the school was really, really doing some excellent things as far as music is concerned. The, the saxophone section at Virginia State was a little mentally ill. They were challenged, <laughs> and, and I'm gonna hey. tell you. I'm gonna tell you why. They thought that they were a band, so all thirty of them would get out of the stands, walk over to the opposing side of the field. James Gates had on one of these masks, like this old man Halloween mask. Okay. White mask with the long white hair down the head. All right. And the saxophones would stroll single file over to the other side of the field and stand in front of the opposing band and challenge <laughs> them. And they would walk up to any band and challenge them. And 99% of the time, they turn around, walk back, and the other band would sit there as quiet as, 
<laughs> like I ain't messing with that. Well, good, Gates that had, he had reached a certain point with all of these accolades and all this stuff they were doing that he was no longer being challenged at Virginia State. He and I had a talk and he said, Bill, I'm thinking about going somewhere where I can be challenged a little bit. I'm thinking about going to Berkeley. And I want to know why Berkeley? Well, okay, I'm, all right, so this is how it happened. Because I grew up, man, and listening to, you know, all of these bands, in particular, man, would come down to you and Bill, you know, and then, you know, Mr. Payton and Hugo Jackson and, you know, so many other people, Tuscan Jazz. You be around those people all the time. And I, 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 I read around that even when they had what is base currency. I used to go to these people when they used to practice. Uh -huh. I never wanted to be anything but a good saxophonist. I wanted to do that. Okay. I started getting kind of scared that when I would go to my instructors, they would give me my homework and say, listen, you bring this homework back the next day. But Charles, I would finish the homework before I even leave to go to my next class. Right, right, right. I would you. I would you. And then I would go back to the instructor and go, okay, well, I'm finished. Can you give me what some What else you got? That's right. And they were like, well, let's see if we can talk about this later. Like, talk about what with later? I just finished. Can you give me some more? And they wouldn't do it. So I got on the phone and said, Mom, I don't like this. We got to do something better than this. Now, that was one thing. Every Friday, we had seminar. So I stayed on seminar, which means that, you know, you have to play a different classical piece. Well, I like playing. So I played on seminar a different piece of music every Friday. And then they said, well, you were Gates, you got to give somebody else a chance to play. I'm like, no, I'm not. Why do I need to give anybody a chance to play? They, I, I didn't come to, to Virginia State for nobody else but me. They want to play, they need to practice. Then the other thing is, we get on the yard and catch and go, Gates, man, let's see if we can hang out. I'm like, man, we don't need to hang out. You got to play tomorrow. You don't even know the music. So, yeah. I, so I would go upstairs in the practice rooms now, now, this is, you know, we seem to be kind of crazy, but I would go to the practice room. I knew what time the janitors would leave. I would go back to my dorm room, get my pillow and give me a blanket and would walk back over to the practice room, wait until the janitors would leave, hide behind the piano and then practice all night. But that happened every night. I would practice. Yeah. So, you know, I just got tired of nobody would practice and then they wouldn't give me my homework. Then I went to the chairman, and the chairman said, okay, I didn't know. But the chairman got in contact with a representative from Berkeley for me to do, for, for to see whether or not I want to go to Berkeley. All right. Then I had to do, I was on seminar again. Being on seminar, now, you, you probably can imagine this, Charles. At Virginia State, we had these big, long windows. And it was right. in April or something like that, in April or March. And, the, and they open the windows. You know, when you're playing all of these classical stuff, supposedly you can't pick up the music if it fall off the music stand. You, you're supposed to know it. Well, this time the wind blew the music off the stand. I had a four-piece movement. And, you know, I went to uh, one of my instructors went to go and pick up the music and told him, don't do it. Let me go close my eyes and let me just play all of these movements by memory. I just wanted to finish it. I didn't know that the representative was there. He witnessed it. Then I got called into the chairman's office and then he presented me with my full scholarship to go to Berkeley. And then my private lesson instructor said, well, Berkeley doesn't give degrees. I'm like, man, I got a catalog right in front of me. What you mean they don't? I got to go for real, man. So I never paid to go. I went with the Berkeley with full scholarship. But right. this brother went to school and is an associate with all of the young top jazz musicians in the country. Of right today. Now. Right because, now. Yeah, yeah, the guys who top today. The top yeah. today, he, yes. when you ask Jeff Lorber or you ask uh, Alex Bouillon or you ask somebody else, if you say the name Saxmo, they go, oh, uh, yeah. James Genus, uh, not only James, uh, Omar Hakeem. Omar Hakim, famous drummer, whatever. I mentioned, I when I met Omar, I said, yeah, my boy is James Sa Saxmo. I mean, Turlin Carrington. You go uh, Branford Marcellus, the 
You go down the list of top names. So, so, so Gates, and, and not only that, but he's toured the world with some of these people. Right. Uh, even right. not recently, he toured the world with Billy Childs and Larry Carlton, or, or with, Bill, with Billy Childs. When, when Chris Bode came to Richmond, he asked, or they allowed this young man to come on stage and play with Chris Bode. For the record, you and I understand what his level is. I need him to do like like uh, like our friend did some name dropping. Yeah. I, see, I saw the picture of him. Uh, who was it that gave you your diploma when you graduated? Oscar Peterson. I saw Oscar Peterson give him his diploma, but then I also know that he played with Art Blakey. Yeah, and, and so. So, so tell us who you went to school with and try to remember as many of them as possible. All right. Drop some names on Okay. Um, of course, Bradford Marcella was the first person I met when I got to Berkeley. The, the first person. Okay. Then I had, you know, Kevin Eubanks. Yeah. Then I had <laughs> or, or, Omaho King. I had him. Okay. Had Watts. Uh, the play, plays drums. Then I had. Oh, oh, oh Jeff Tane Watts? Jeff Tame Watts. When Marcellus. Right. Number then, one drummer. Right. Curtis William, he's still, he's still with Cool in the game right now. Right. All right. He's a piano person. All right. Then we had, um, his name is Tigger. And he plays with Earth, Wind, and Fire right now. He's the same. He took Maurice White spot. Right. They call him Tigger. Then we had, oh my God, man. Um, um, the Bill, the Billings. Yeah, Billy Kilson. Yeah. We had Billy Kills in the drummer. Then we had um Bell Bullock. We had him at Berkeley. Then we had um we had um Alex Boone Young. Cyrus. Then we had Cyrus Chestnut. You know, I mean is this a who I mean a drummer, a female drummer? Oh uh, yeah, Terrell Lynn Carrington. Let me let me just tell you this right here. Um it was another guy by the name of Keith Robinson who played guitar with Earth Wind and Fire. And and this guy was my roommate. What happened was, man, that um, you know, at that time, you know, Art Blakey and the jazz message was was real big at that time. Cause my private lesson instructor was Bill Pierce, who was actually playing with Art Blakey and the Jazz Message. Then I had Andy McGee, who was the first ten tenor saxophonist that was playing with the Buddy Rich band. So I had him as my instructor. You know, and I played with these guys as well. So what uh, what what Bill Bill Pierce said, well, look, Gates, you know, you need to just come hang out with me. So I did. So I made my point that I wanted to play in the Art Blake and the Jazz Messages Band. So my private lesson instructor gave me my first gig. Now, now here's the people that was on my first gig. Steve Ture, who is the, the trombone that plays in the, tonight's band. Right. I had him. I had Walter Bishop Jr., who was the pianist that was, that was already was playing with, with Bird. I had Alan Dawson who was the drummer that was already playing with Ella Fitzgerald. You know, these are people who I had, and I had my private lesson instructor, Mr. B. Pierce. So having those people on my first gig, when I got to get the gig, man, with Art Blakey, Walter Davis Jr., who was, who was from Richmond, right. but he played with, with, uh, with, with Bird at 13 and took, you know, had that European tour. When, when when the seat opened up, Kenny Garrett said, man, I can't do the gig, man. You know, y'all need to get a, a sub or get somebody who want to play the gig. I never had the audition. Walter Davis and Mark Whitfield, that's the other good times he went to school with. Right. Yeah. They called me, said, Gates, you got to call my mama. Uh, Miss Gates, you need to, uh, your son's got the gig. I was on a Thursday night. You, you, your son's got the gig. Let him know to be in New York and Sweet Basil. That's how I got the gig with Art Blake. And then I got the gig, man, with, with Dizzy Gillespie. Played with Dizzy Gillespie's big band. You know? Then, you know, I had uh, my, first, my first week at, at Berkeley, I went to go see Ella. I ain't had no money. I had no money at all. And I waited out in the rain, waiting for her to finish singing. She came out and she said, son, you've been waiting for me. I said, yes, ma'am. Why are you here? I said, because I wanted to see the great Ella Fitzgerald. She said, where you go to school at? Go to school at Berkeley. He said, well, you know, since you're out here in this rain, 
I'm going to sing. I'm singing in the rain. She sung, I'm singing in the rain to me. Just heard that. <laughs> and she said, you got to make sure that you got to promise me right now that you're going to keep jazz alive. You got to promise me to that. Promise me. Tell me that now. You're a young lion. You got to say it to me because we all going to die soon. So I promised you that I was going to keep jazz alive. Wow. What a story. Man, let me tell you. Wow. Here's my point, Charles. You and I have done a lot of things in the industry. All right. And a lot of played a lot of hit records, done a lot of different things. And a lot of people don't understand that we choose to be where we are, to do what we are, so that we can have a spiritual peace about ourselves. Correct. All right. Correct. So what I found out was that Gates was like you and I to the point that he had been at the top of the mountain and had yeah. a chance to focus at the top of the mountain, yeah. but he chose to come back home because of family, because of his mother, because of his roots. And yeah. that, like myself, pushed him into education. So yeah. now yeah. we're now I'm trans I'm segueing and transitioning to the fact that he ended up doing some teaching things that it was a way to share his experience in music, like what I did coming off the road. Um, and you would have been a fantastic teacher, Charles. Johnny Payton, Charles, used to always encourage us to get our masters because he knew that for us to be able to continue teaching at the college level and other levels, we had to have a master's degree. Whereas Brother Gates was able to get his master's in jazz studies from the University of North Carolina Central. Now he is the director of the Billy Taylor Jazz Studies Program at Virginia State University. Thank no you, problem. Brother Gates. Thank you, Brother Gates, for sure. Man, Charles, man, again, man, you know, uh, the, the young cats, man, that, that grew up, you know, uh, listening, I'm one of them. Yeah, I'm one of the guys, man, that, you know, I, I can't tell you how many times, man, I you know, young cats like myself, I mean, listening. I mean, really, seriously, listening, going, damn, I want to do that. I want to do that. You know, the same thing when it came down to the trust. I want to do that, man. You know, you, and Abner, especially when y'all played in the Ebony Island Club. Oh, you know, we had to be out in the back. They had well, what was you doing in Ebony Island? You were too young to be in there. I know, we, we had a little <laughs> hole. You look at the little hole. But, it's, <laughs> <laughs> but that's, that's so, you know, I mean, I, I knew of, I knew of, you know, about 15, 16 years old. And I knew of all of I just knew it, man. That, you know, and so when I look at you and I look at Bill, and then when I look at, you know, all of the instructors, like when we talk about John Payton, man, look, that was time, because I told you, I didn't know this story in, in terms of John Payton knowing that they wanted me to be a saxophonist. Hey, Jake, thank you very much, man. We got to go. Uh, we may have to bring you back in sometime in the future, but thank you and thank you, Charles, for let's let's talk Richmond, uh, let's talk music, Richmond, RVA, let's just talk music. Man, thank you, man. Thank you so Love much. Love you guys. Love you guys. Thank you, man. Thank you.